David came here, director of the Midwest Academy in Naperville, Illinois, bringing you a training tip on working your straight punches. At the time of this recording, um, I've been teaching combative skills to members of the military, law enforcement community, and civilians for um, about a quarter century, about 25 years. Um, in that time, I've seen that the uh, probably one of the biggest things that students struggle with as they learn um, punching skills is being able to get their body behind a straight punch, uh, particularly when there's more than one strike being thrown. So, you know, they're throwing a, a short, long combination, um, of being able to get their body behind both of those strikes equally. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So in order to demonstrate the proper uh, punching alignment, I'm going to demonstrate on the body of the opponent bag here. Um, if you note, uh, what we've done is we've striped off the target's midline, and we've striped off uh, what we call his flank here, right? Um, and in terms of fighting, uh, most people are left foot uh, dominant, so we've set him in a position where he would be left foot forward. Um, and I'm uh, going to stand right foot forward, so um, you can kind of see this better. Uh, but the window uh, of, of gap that we are striking into is basically between these two points. Um, on a straight punch. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lead foot uh, in line with the center of this gap, which allows my lead punch to have a good uh, rotation and between the uh, hip and the shoulder right, to guide that punch in. Um, and then what I need to be able to do is I need to be able to rotate the other hip into the same gap in order to put my body behind the strike. So in order to do that, what I'm going to go ahead and do to start with is I'm going to take a little bit of a shuffle step out with my lead leg, which is going to align my back hip up and allow my back, my back strike to come through. Okay? So at a slow speed, that looks like this. Okay? As we get better and more fluid at it, some of that stepping gets uh, becomes body language, uh, becomes weight shift. Um, so that looks more like this thing. You know, of course, the other thing is um, we don't want to strike an extension. So we want our punches to be in a lot closer. Um, so the drill uh, will look more like this as it's executed. So what you notice I'm doing is I'm standing outside the target's range and when I go to throw my lead strike, I'm stepping in and at the time my foot's landing, I'm rolling the hip and shoulder into the strike. And then at that point, I'm also shifting my weight, which allows my, my other hip to come into this same window and put body behind that. So. Like, so, of course, what we're talking about today is straight punches, um, but we have a whole arsenal of other strikes that hit in circles and uh, come in at other vectors, such as hooks and uppercuts, where we don't have to be as concerned about this window. Um, go ahead and demonstrate some of those for you and just kind of show you what that might look like. So, again, um, we, set, we set Bob up. If he was completely square to me, um, I would be standing this way, but most people are standing somewhat bladed with their dominant leg back. So we'll put him in probably the most common position, right? That opens up that window that we've been talking about today for the straight strikes. Um, but just to again show you what some of these other uh, combinations might look like, we'll say um, a short, long uppercut combination might look something like this. Right? We can add a hook at the end of that. We can even add in leg maneuvers. So you get the idea of kind of how that works. Okay, so the final thing to talk about today, um, and this is a little bit more advanced concept, so if you're having trouble or you're just learning your straight punches, you probably want to file this away uh, for a little bit. Um, but it's the, uh, the idea of getting the timing 
um, as efficient as possible between the, the two strikes. So one of the ways I do that is um, after I uh, after I thought about driving the, uh, the front hip forward to make that first strike, that uh, I don't think about pulling the arm back or this hip coming back. I just think about shifting the weight and driving the other hand and the other hip forward. Um, when I think about pulling back, I'll always have a gap between the strikes. It'll always kind of sound like this. Right? But as soon as I think about one hip switching into the other hip, um, the timing gets a lot tighter. Okay, so one hip's going directly into the next hip, right? The hips are just switching out. Um, and that switch of the hip is what retracts the original strike. Okay, so just a recap of uh, what we talked about today. Um, the, the high points or the, the uh, points to drive home about um, straight punches and training your straight punches. Uh, we want to look at um, what, is the, um, what is the gap that we are striking into. Um, and whatever that gap is, when we practice, we want to start out from a range where we can't quite touch the target and our guard is in tight. Um, and we close that distance enough so that we're hitting with bent arms. Um, as we hit, we want to make sure that whichever, uh, whichever hip corresponds to the hand that we're, we're striking with, that that hip drives into that window. Um, you might, uh, you know, beginning level students sometimes don't have the waist flexibility um, to get the hip aligned correctly uh, into the gap. So if you're just starting out or you tend to be, um, have a tight back, you might need to take a little shuffle step to get the second punch aligned, right? Um, but as that gets better, that shuffle step, right, will become more of a weight shift. Um, and then you will, uh, you know, you'll have uh, a more fluid strike. Okay, so we hope this tip has helped you out and helps you practice your straight punches. And uh, from the academy, good luck with your training.